So I would just, just say briefly to it that um, I think we run into very serious problems of interpretation and that flood into the rest of the biblical narrative when we say that it's a poetic narrative and it's not literal creation story. I think we should take Jesus' view of the Old Testament. I think that we should have his same view in terms of the history of the Old Testament, what he believed about the Word of God. And when you see Jesus speaking about creation, it's in terms of literal creation. In Matthew chapter 19, when Jesus gives the distinctions between male and female that come together, become one, he's speaking about the creation account, and that's a literal account for him. If we say that the creation narrative in Genesis 1 and 2 is poetic and it's not truly literal, then is that true also for Genesis 3? Is it true about the fall? Is it true about our first parents? And if, if, if so, if we say, well, that's also up for grabs, maybe it's not our literal uh, Adam and Eve, well, then we now lost Romans 5. Romans 5, there is a representative Adam and a representative Jesus. So you see, it, it's absolutely true. If you destroy Genesis, you've destroyed the entire narrative of the scriptures, and therefore you've destroyed the story of redemption. And so um, I, just a quick resource, apologiaradio.com, about four weeks ago, we had Dr. Kenneth Gentry on talking about his book, um, As It Is Written. It used to be called Hath God Said. As It Is Written, uh, is uh, Genesis literal or literary? He spent about two hours with us on this specific subject. And so I would point you to Dr. Gentry.